Hey, hey, James, how you doing? Doing pretty good, Ryan. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Um, as we start every interview, I want to get a little intro from you, tell people who you are, where you're from, and all that good stuff. Okay, uh, yeah, my name is uh, James Jacob, and I run the channel Shogun Jimmy on YouTube. I've been married to my wife, Valerie, for 16 years, and we have two daughters. Uh, but in my house, I'm known as the Blue-Eyed Devil, and I have a little helper in this case, and I'm talking about our cat, Tor Naga. I named him after the Shogun in James Covell's novel. All right, um, going on from that, I want to get a bit, little bit of your background, like what'd you go to school for, would you, what have you done for a living in the past, or what do you do now, stuff like that. Okay, uh, yeah, um, I was born and raised in Denver, Colorado. Um, I've done some school in college at a community college, um, but I don't really care for that that much. What I really care about was my, um, uh, I'm kind of an auto dialectic or self-educating person. So uh, even from in high school, um, I studied like Bruce Lee, martial arts. Uh, the school just wasn't offering anything that I was interested in. So that's kind of where it all began. Um, but more recently I studied philosophy and I found that I love philosophy or what I would actually say is that, or what I just said was, I love, love philosophy, or uh, not what, philosophy, wisdom. Um, <laughs> and um, it's just been a lot of fun. Um, I've actually rebranded the way that I look at philosophy, because the love of wisdom actually has kind of a dead connotation for me. Um, I try to place it more active where it's, um, I'm a lover of wise conceit. So... I'm really into reading books. I have probably two or 3,000 physical copies. And on my Kindle, I probably have 10,000 books. So I, I, I read in the past a lot more than I do now. <laughs> That's a lot of books. <laughs> All right, most people give the title maker to people who make things, obviously. Uh, what kind of things do you like to make? Um, I've actually made a lot of stuff in my past. Um, when I was studying martial arts, I made wooden dummies. Um, from there, uh, after I met my wife, I started doing chain mail and stained glass and stuff like that. Uh, brewed beer. Um, I actually, for two or three years, I was really impassioned about uh, cooking and grilling and those sorts of things. And then uh, this maker movement actually stems again from kind of like my philosophy. One of the philosophers I read a lot was um, very into the human as the artist. So uh, this is just one way that we could actually move forward and create. And uh, ever since I built my garage, I've been very excited about, you know, every week trying to come out with something new and kind of in a different realm. I should have quite a few holiday gifts this uh, up and coming season that will be quite interesting outside of my norm. Um, so, like, you said the martial arts and the cooking and stuff like that. Is that kind of where making started for you or did it start at an earlier age? Like, when did it all start for you? Um, uh, probably about 16. Um, in one of my first videos, I talked about still my dad's oak to make nunchucks, uh, the wooden dummies and stuff like that. Um, I was talking to my wife about this the other day, and I said out of sheer boredom, and she's like, that's not what you want to say. And it's just like, yeah, you know, nothing good was on TV, got tired of listening to too much music, and had to start doing something more physical and mentally challenging at the same time. All right, and there's nothing like getting out and making something with your own hands, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to express yourself, show your artistic side, and just, so I think it's therapeutic. I've said that to other people. It's very therapeutic to get out and start making stuff. Oh, yeah, and I'm, I'm really intrigued when I start a project. I sometimes don't know the, all the path all the way until I get to the end. So it's actually a, a very, like, major avenue of discovery for me. And I don't know if that really reads in the video because it's just one decisive path and understanding of how I design something. But in the shop, I'm sitting there thinking, how will I do the next thing? And it'd be great if you could show, you know, a two hour long video of you working out the process and stuff, but nobody would want to watch that. <laughs> Some might. Uh, what made you want to start making uh, videos on YouTube? Well, my work actually. Um, about two years ago, um, we had a massive change to where like our two top bosses got removed and they were replacing everyone. And I was just like seeing the dangers of how that environment might be. So I wanted like an out. And uh, that's when uh, we realized that our home property changed. So I was able to have enough money to re refinance my house and build the garage. Um, and then I just started watching uh, CNC stuff, believe it or not. And uh, after I started watching all the videos from Jimmy Dresta and those guys and Alan and um, Eloy and those people, um, it was just like, I think I could really do this. 
And I actually got moved away from CNC where I was just like, I think I can make a lot of these things with just basic hand tools and not spend the six or seven grand for a CNC machine. So it was just like, I don't know. I just wanted to possibly move out of my career into something else and make things all at the same time. It, it was just a really good fit. So I have to credit one of my coworkers who was just like, have you ever heard of a CNC machine? And I was like, no. And I went to YouTube and ran into this nice CNC machine and they were showing um, a, a sculpture of the Buddha being carved on a CNC machine. And I, I mean, I'm just fascinated. It's two minutes of just it doing its thing, you know, a four axis CNC machine. And then here's the video. It like pans out and you see 10 of them making and then it sits there for 34 seconds. And then it pans out again and you see like a line of 10 of these machines making 100 of them at one time. And it just blew my mind. And it was just very interesting. So, yeah, getting on YouTube was definitely a weird start for me, but I've had a lot of fun ever since I've started. Oh, yeah. Well, that kind of segues good into this next one. Um, from start to where you are now, how has your journey been so far? Like the highs, the lows, the ups and downs? <clears throat> oh, it's, it's been all rise, actually. I, I started and I kind of did a really bad video where my talking is very mumbled and kind of shy. And uh, I picked up a few subscribers then. I think Eloy was like my third subscriber out of everyone. And then we just started talking back and forth in the comments. And then somewhere along the line, uh, he dropped a, um, a comment. And then we started talking more like on a Facebook level. And the day I'm sitting there saying, hey, Eloy, let's collab. Uh, Mike Mira from Kinderhook um, chimed in and said he had a full idea of what he wants to do for a collab. So I kind of put Eloy on hold until we had an idea. And then me and Mike did our collab. And then uh, after I did that one, Alan jumps in and says, hey, I got something for you. You know how Alan is. He's just very energetic like that. And then uh, it's just been all rise. And then the Maker's Rock thing, uh, that that's just been the height of everything that I've done. And I, I can't wait to do our, our next one that we kind of already have a little bit planned. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yep. All right, uh, moving on a little bit into some of the actual stuff you've done. Um, the skull table. You made a really sweet skull table. I can't I imagine a lot of people have seen it. I want a little bit of background on that build and the video. Yeah. Um, actually, a lot of that build and, and thing was what I was just talking about, the collab with Eloy, is uh, I did like a sticker giveaway. So I did like one of my vlogs. I called them Noise and Nonsense. And in there, I gave a shout out to Eloy and Alan. And when I was talking about Eloy, I was like, well, he makes a skull this, a skull that, a skull this, and everything. And then I, I shot him a Facebook message saying, hey, by the way, I think I set you up perfectly for our collab. I said, all you could do is make skulls. And if you go watch his video, I mean, it was one exchange on Facebook, and he comes out with his stunning video. And it, it was just absolutely awesome. And then uh, what I really liked about that is I had a week to kind of resolve the skull challenge. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I actually did uh, three kind of, I started two projects and due to either camera failure or the material being wrong, I actually started with uh, two projects and then I ended up on the school table. So that wasn't even my first um, possibility. Um, so it, it was just a lot of fun to have a deadline like that. One more we want to touch on is the pen you made using uh, lathe. Um, give us the story behind that and how the process was for you because we thought it was really cool being able to make a pen without a lathe. That's craziness. Sure. Um, that that actually started uh, last Christmas when Rother had a, a, a gigantic sale on those pins. For like 80 bucks, I was able to buy 25 pin sets and the Coca Bola. So I don't have a lathe, but I bought pins. Like, what can I be thinking? It was just that kind of a deal. So I had this box in the back of my shop full of these pins and projects that I wanted to get to, uh, but I didn't have that. So, I mean, I was just saying, how could I do this um, without the lathes? And then I kind of sat there and thought it out. And I actually had this idea that no one's ever made a pin without a lathe. So I ran into that like, oh, I'm breaking ground. I'm doing so good. And then of course, after I publish it and a week later or two weeks later, I'm discovering about five other guys have done it the same, well, not the same way, but without a lathe. So that was a lot of fun. And then um, I've actually had more success um, on Instructables with that compared to YouTube. Um, on Instructables, I had 40,000 views on that one. So, I mean, that one really boomed. I'm going to have to do an Ask a Maker sometime about uh, utilizing Instructables. Because I don't think a lot of YouTubers do use it. No. Uh, well, I would say about 10 or 20 of us do. I've, I've caught a few other people on there. Um, but it, it's a valuable resource because, I mean, you're talking, there's like almost a million people on that website looking on how to do things. 
So if you score big on there, I mean, it could draw a lot of traffic to your YouTube channel. So it's definitely underutilized. Yeah, I get a lot of traffic from there each month. It's pretty, pretty reliable too. You're a part of the maker, the maker community. We wouldn't be talking to you if you weren't. Uh, so what are your thoughts on the community as a whole? Uh, the community, um, like I said, at first I was kind of relatively obscure and this and that. But as I chugged along, I've just gained an audience. And I've gained an audience with the people who are out there making things just like I am. So that just like really warms me on the inside, if you will. And uh, everything's been positive. I have 50 videos now. Um, I've had about 20 downvotes or whatever you call those down thumb things. And other than that, I've had nothing but positive con uh, comments all the way through. Uh, my worst place, I think, has been Reddit, of course. I think everyone else has suffered that one. Um, but the maker community is absolutely awesome. Um, I think me and you both this morning were tagged in a, a shout out video. So, I mean, just you wake up and next thing you know, someone else that you haven't talked to is shouting out to you saying you're doing a wonderful job. And more than likely, uh, that same person, uh, we'll have to discuss on how we could kind of uh, be nice to him in the future. All right, we want to give everyone an opportunity to give some love back to the creator or the maker community. So who would you like to give some love back to? <clears throat> uh, the person that I, I've been watching for a very long time is um, I'd Rather Make It Myself. I think his name is Mark. He has a, a really good channel. Um, and that's all he does is, you know, he has this project to do at his home, solving honeydews or whatever you would call it. And he just does phenom phenomenal work. I, I really like him, so you might want to go check out his channel. Um, and then, uh, and actually I should have probably said this one first. Everyone in our Maker Rock collab video, um, I absolutely enjoy working with you guys. Uh, that has been great. I've enjoyed all your guys' channels since the very beginning, uh, since I found you guys. And uh, that would probably be the second really good um, shout out that I can. Uh, but overall, um, I have, I think, 300 subscriptions of people making something like that or anything like that on YouTube. So it's also really hard to point out any specific person. Um, I also have that challenge coming up Monday or Tuesday in my rambling videos. Uh, Alan got mad because I didn't do a shout out. So uh, <laughs> I, I gotta figure out a way to do uh, solve that problem as well. Yeah, this is a hard part of the interview because it's hard to pinpoint just a few because there's so many. Yeah. I, I get inspiration from every video. I mean, there's the people out there that got the high two or three thousand dollar camera set up and mics and this and that. I learn from them just as like I would learn from anyone with a home cell phone, you know, bad audio, you know, sometimes, you know, horrible video. But what they're doing actually working, I can learn just as much from him as anyone else. All right. I agree. All right. Last but not least, before we let you go, where can everyone find you online? Uh, well, my main uh, vein of everything that you can contact me on is YouTube. Uh, that's where I like to be found. Um, on Facebook, I do have a Shogun Jimmy kind of uh, profile, but it's very underutilized and under uh, sought out. I think I have like seven followers on there. Um, so uh, on Facebook, I'm just under my name, James Jacob. Um, I do have an Instagram and a Twitter account under Shogun Jimmy uh, in, in some form or fashion. And those are pretty much where I hang out at. Although I do have a Reddit and Imgur account as well. All right, man. It's been a blast getting a little bit more about you and getting some insight into some of the stuff you do. Yeah. I'd like to thank you and Amy for this. This is a great opportunity for me. Yeah, no problem. Really enjoyed it. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right. Have a good one, Ryan.